Good morning, it's Trisha with Easy E Mini Trade, and I want to go over Monday, February 1st, and Tuesday, February 2nd. If you'd like more information about the setups, you can go to www.easyeminitrade.com and have come up with a date for the next evening webinar, which will be Thursday, February 25th at 8 p.m., and you can also get the information on the website for that as well. So we'll go over Monday. There wasn't a whole lot to do on Monday except for take range trades. We took a small trade here on the ES in the morning on Monday and that was at around 947 and it worked out for a small gain. It wasn't anything great. But I did want to point out, you know, we talk about range trades and it was, you know, an ideal day for range trades and basically you get up to a resistance area and the upper channel and it's rolling over your stochastic is rolling over from overbought and you take it. Um, you can expect to get to the middle line or ideally you're looking to get to your lower channel um, which it did, it just takes a while. Then you get to support, come back inside the channel and you come up from oversold, you take it expecting to get to the upper channel or the um, previous area of resistance. Usually you would just be shooting for the channel. So as volatility decreases, your channel is going to get smaller and smaller. So it becomes more likely that you would pass on those because of the fact that there's not going to be a lot of room to be profitable. So it's just something that you can practice, but it was an ideal day. It was definitely an ideal day for range trades on Monday the 1st. And this is Tuesday. And again, wasn't, you know, anything of, of a great day in any real directional move um, and when you look at the daily chart you can see why we've had you know many days that were large down days and so you would expect the market to consolidate a little bit so that's kind of what we're experiencing right now but we had this trade at uh, 1027 on the NQ setting up here because we would want to get above this resistance area here so we get above it and we look to enter in above this bar and doesn't trade to our entry price on the next bar but it does on this bar so we're in and want to point out that at the same time you had one setting up on the ES wanted to get above this area right here and then look for an entry so you get closed above that um, reference area and you would get filled on this bar here we were already in on the um, the NQ, like maybe just by a fraction of a second, but we were in. But regardless, it would have worked out better on the ES than it did on the NQ, but unfortunately you don't know that ahead of time. So, you know, we opted, and I'm always going to opt for what's setting up um, sooner, but they both had um, a relative amount of um, space above price for it to move. So either one of them, you know, could have worked out better than the other. You just don't know until after the fact which one it's going to be. And in this case, it was the ES. So anyway, we're in the NQ and we're, you know, kind of going nowhere. You know, we're, we're expecting to get, you know, up to here, obviously, 1770, and it, it never quite makes it. But we're in the trade and I just wanted to point this out. This is sometimes helpful in deciding when you're going to just, you know, take what you can and get out. So here we are, we're in, and we're not really going anywhere. And here's our tick down here. And let's see, you'll notice right here where we're in, we're still, you know, hanging out above zero and we're at the upper end here of our um, tick readings. And so, you know, we're fine as long as we're staying above zero. And you'll notice here we did create like a little bit of a support area. Um, just at zero on our tick. So I'm feeling like, okay, we're okay. Then you'll notice that the tick starts to spend more time closer to zero than breaking and then breaking below zero. And so then you're expecting, okay, prices is, is going to start to drop. So, you know, you flatten and cancel. Um, we wound up with a small profit on that one, but that's helpful in deciding, okay, this trade's going nowhere. When am I going to get out? And this is a trade that we took um, just about 130 on the ES would want to get a, this resistance area before we take it so want to get closed above there we do we're closed outside the channel so we look to take it above this bar here get filled on the next bar and it kind of takes a while but it does finally work out now 
we know going in, this red line is 1100, and we've been here many times before. Um, so we know we're likely going to have some trouble getting through that area, if we're lucky enough to even touch it. So we got in knowing that we're going to have to take some profits off the table before we ever get to 1100, and then we can just sit there, um, break even on a final third in hopes of you know getting a, a little pop through there and just maybe ride the momentum as it breaks 1100. That never happened. So um, we took profits on two thirds and were break even on on one third. So it worked out fine. But I can't stress enough if you know what to expect going into a trade where you might have issue, it will save you from sitting here, sitting here, and you know, expecting it to go higher and it's just not going and then it pulls back and then it turns into a losing trade. So I just wanted to point that out. Thought maybe that you might find that helpful. And if you'd like more information, you can go to www.easyinminitrade.com.